remains that they will be used for the exact same purpose that the current helicopters in Syria are being used, and that is to kill civilians. A State Department official trying to smooth over a flap with the Pentagon about Russian helicopters on their way to Syria. And we're back now with the panel. Well, Secretary of State Clinton and the Pentagon, David, are now at odds about whether Russia is supplying Syria with new attack helicopters, as she contends, or with old helicopters uh, that have been refurbished, uh, as the Pentagon says. One, what do you make of the disagreement? Does it make any difference to the civilians in Syria who are being slaughtered? I don't really think the disagreement matters because at the end of the day, uh, civilians in Syria are being killed and Russia does whatever it wants. And it's pretty much been this way since the end of the Cold War and we keep taking a soft approach to Russia. George W. Bush looked into Putin's eyes and he saw a friend. That didn't work out so well. President Obama has taken a particularly soft approach. And if we're getting anything out of this diplomacy, it's unclear. And at some point, I think that we're going to have to understand that Russia is a strategic competitor. They, they are not easy to work with and have no interest in working with us on things that matter to us. And we're going to have to deal with that and work around it. Juan, well, new helicopters are rolled. How big a role is Russia playing in the carnage that's taking place now in Syria? Well, clearly they're a supporter. Uh, they refuse to join in the idea of international condemnation of what Syria is doing. So you have to wonder what's going on. But the, I think there's the mistake of saying new helicopters versus refurbished. It just introduces the suggestion that maybe we don't know what we're talking about, and that's not helpful because we need to be adamant and very clear here. As David said, it, people are getting killed, and whether it's refurbished or new, that's not good. But once you get into a diplomatic tug of war in which you say, oh, well, the United States made a mistake, how can you make a mistake? We should know what we're talking about. We should know if those are new helicopters. In fact, we have some, in, in some cases, we have contracts with the manufacturer in Russia. We should be able to recognize it. That's amateurish. Charles. Look, the, the Russians have interest in Syria. The Russians have... Uh, influence in Syria. Russia is rebuilding a naval facility in Syria in the port of Tardis. On the Mediterranean. On the Mediterranean so it can reestablish a presence which it lost at, in the post-Soviet days. Putin is the man who said the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century was not the Holocaust, the Second World War, who knows, the famines, the collapse of the Soviet Union. His idea is to rebuild Russian strength and Syria is a part of that. He thinks in strategic terms and he is not susceptible to the kind of chiding and pleading and bleeding that you get out of the State Department. And they know, Putin knows, that in Obama he has no adversary, he has total contempt for Obama, who on every front has given him everything he wanted in the reset policy on missile defense, on Iran, we have we, no complaints on the way it's blockaded us, stopped us, stopped the U.N. resolutions. And that's why he does exactly as he pleases. Whether it's a new helicopter or old one is irrelevant. If you take a new one out of storage, an old one out of storage because it can't be used, and you restore it, it's a new helicopter. Meanwhile, David, uh, the U.N. General Assembly is meeting now on Syria. Will that accomplish anything? No. The UN General Assembly never accomplishes anything <laughs> worthwhile. At least it never accomplishes its goals. It's a great place for countries to go and talk, but I, y you shouldn't expect anything to happen there that can really have an effect on Syria, not with a guy like Assad in control. And it's a statement of how weak our position is. We know that anything that we attempt in the one place that might have an effect, Security Council, is going to be stopped by a Russian veto because again they have contempt for American opposition so they're going to go to, to the General Assembly where the Russians don't have a veto but where the General Assembly has no power to do anything about anything ever. Well Kofi Annan is there and Kofi Annan has said that his no, attempt, no, he's the former, the former head of the United Nations right? and he has been there trying to act in some way to bring peace to the situation and he has acknowledged there's been a failure but what this can do is to say to other countries, especially European countries involved in NATO, that this is not now a cause for action, a moment for action. We haven't reached that point yet. Everybody's been reluctant to get in. Clearly, this is, Syria has become a patron for Iran in this affair, and the Russians are involved, as we've been discussing this evening. So it could lead to a larger conflagration. But the need right now is to get other countries to say, we need to do something, and we may be approaching that moment. That's it for the panel, but stay tuned to hear about a mystery that's still unsolved 50 years later.